Good morning, Future Todd. So it seems I've been complaining about work and careers and just whine, 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 and that's not really what I wanted to do when I uh, when I started making these videos. So I thought I'd take the opportunity, now that it's Valentine's Day, to talk about the one thing that's been keeping me going, that's been keeping me happy. And that's this. Huh. No, it's this. This is what I'm talking about. Now, sure, my workday can be, you know, stressed and unfulfilling. That really all slips away when I come home and see her. Pretty much within the confines of, of this home, we live kind of in a stress-free, um, no-conflict zone. I think the one personal achievement that I can be proud of is going to be, I think, my success at husbanding. I was going to say husbandry, but I think that's something else. The missus and I have been uh, a couple for about 12 years now, and eight of them we've been married. And personally, it feels like it's been an easy ride, I suppose. But here are some things I thought I could share with some couples-to-be to impart my wisdom um, to you, if you need it. And maybe to guide you through this adventure uh, that we call married life. Now first, make your choices together. If there are decisions, especially major decisions, that, uh, that need to be made, um, consult with each other, talk about it, work your way through it. Whether it's whether you what you're going to have for dinner that night, or whether you're going to buy a car. There shouldn't be uh, just one unilateral decision maker. By making a choice that impacts both of you, like say, even if it's just dinner, but you're deciding on behalf of the other person, you run the risk of, of creating a sense of resentment. And that's really kind of the atmosphere or environment you want to prevent. And the choice may still be in your favor if there's a disagreement, but at least, um, like they say in the Oscars, it's nice to be considered. Secondly, now when it comes to the house, share your responsibilities. Of course, depending on your personal schedules, there shouldn't just be one person that goes out to get the groceries, that goes to pay the bills. If there are dishes to be cleaned, share that responsibility. What you're trying to encourage here is a personal desire not to have something done, but to do it for somebody else. To get something done so that they don't have to. Thirdly, love them and tell them often. If you aren't normally the vocal kind of partner, um, it may take some getting used to. When uh, the met Mrs. and I first started dating, um, I wasn't used to saying things like, I love you. I would just kind of show it through what my behaviors were and, and, and so forth. And I figured, I just kind of assumed that she could tell how I felt with these actions. But it's more than that. It's more like a combo unit meal deal. You have to show and tell. I mean, it's second na nature now, and I certainly try to tell her at every chance I get. But I want people to understand that by saying I love you to your partner. You're not just saying I still love you, but you're saying I always love you. So four, never harbor resentment. Some things work out, some things don't. You may disagree occasionally, you may even fight. But when the dust is settled, move on. Don't hold any feelings of anger or passion from that moment. That will obviously build into resentment. And that resentment will certainly cloud anything, any judgment, any decision you make going forward. Despite any conflict you may have had, trust that you love them. You're both working together for each other. Fifthly, talk. Express yourself. Nobody's a mind reader and everyone misses that. If something bothers you, say it. If something excites you, say it. Don't bottle it in. I think we can all understand that it's obviously not a healthy approach to take in any matter. My sixth point here, Listen, you may think you know your partner well, but they are constantly experiencing and learning through their work, their daily life, and interactions with other people. And you're going to have to experience and learn that with them as well. So when they come home and they want to talk, listen. What they have to say may be inconsequential, silly things, but it's important that they're saying it to you. My seventh point here is you don't have to fix them. They may have come into the relationship broken, but you know what? That's okay. Your partner will probably come to you with some trouble. They will talk about their conflicts, their pet peeves, their issues of the day, essentially their problems that they can't resolve. As much as you love them and as hard as it may be to stop yourself from doing this, you don't have to fix it for them. Sometimes they just want to express themselves rather than, than ask for your, your help. And eventually I think with your relationship as it grows, you'll learn better to judge when they need their, your help and when they just need to be heard. I think possibly the best you know, life hack uh, for relationships that I have is that share one hobby together. You don't have to spend every waking moment with them. I mean, I'm at work 40 hours a week doing other things. Um, I'm making a video like this, which she doesn't really involve herself in. But make sure you at least do one thing, just at least one. Ideally many, but at least one thing together. Whether it's going for a hike on the weekend, having an arts and crafts night, or watching Doctor Who. 
at least make sure you're doing it together. Now these things can change from year to year and that's okay. Just ensure that you're moving with it together as well. It took me a long time to really realize this, is that you don't have to have everything figured out to be happy. And I hate to get all zen, but worrying about the future and regretting the past isn't going to get you anywhere. It never has. Just remember to be in the present. And that's really weird to say and I don't really fully understand what that means, but just be in the now. The mistakes of the past got you to where you are, they made you who you are, and that's okay. Accept them and move on. I mean, and the future will come on its own. You're not going to stop that. But don't spend your time wringing your hands trying to make it come any faster. Be happy now and know that you are loved and you're in a loving relationship. Now, these are bits that I learned from my own experiences, and I can't guarantee they're going to work for every relationship, and they're not going to work in every circumstance, and they're not going to ensure a strong relationship. And they're certainly not comprehensive, but ideally they may give you a bit of a pause to reflect. And if you find that things are getting a bit difficult, maybe these pointers can guide you and correct you onto the right path. That's my little disclaimer for you there. See ya.